All right, good evening, uh, everybody. We opened our regular meeting early this evening, and we went into an executive session to interview candidates for some boards and to discuss two matters pertaining to particular people's job history. Um, so we're back from our executive session, and I'd like to welcome you all to our regular town board meeting of tonight, April 11th, and ask you all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve our prior minutes of March 28th, our regular town board meeting. May I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Uh, any opposed? So moved. One abstain. Three, four. Um, I would uh, like to, uh, I have one announcement um, that our leaf and brush drop off is now open Saturday, the uh, last Saturday of the month from 9 to 11 through the first hard frost sometime in November. So drop your leaves and brush off. Um, does anybody else have any um, other announcements? Um, we have two public hearings. I'm going to open our public hearing for our local law to be numbered of 2016 entitled the local law repealing chapter 125-61 of the Rhinebeck Town Code. This is for our uh, green building standards and we've been discussing it. If anybody wishes to speak uh, on this, please do. Um, I am also going to, um, should I keep it open until we vote? I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing, seeing that nobody wishes to speak on it. May I have a second? second. Okay, we're closing the public hearing on our um, for the local law. Repealing Chapter 125-61 of the Town of Rhinebeck Code, Green Building Standard. We also have another local law that we'll be voting on tonight. Local law to be numbered of 2016, entitled a local law changing the meeting date of the Rhinebeck Town Board of Assessors. Um, that's open. We've been asked by our Board of Assessors to change our grievance day from um, the fourth Tuesday in May to the Wednesday after the fourth Tuesday in May. We have one of our assessors is employed full, town, full time by the town of Lloyd as an assessor. She can't be present. The assessors wanted everybody to be able to be present at our grievance day. So this allows us to do so and something that we're allowed to do under uh, our home rule. So if anybody wishes to speak on that, please do. Uh, any anybody from the board? I'd like to make a motion to close our public hearing. May I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, thank you. Any committee uh, or liaison reports? Uh, Brian McWhorter from our committee, which is part of the rec committee. I'm going to go next. I'll speak in his stead. Um, we have our tentative date set for this year's waterfront day, which is June 11th on Saturday. So we are now reaching out to some of the local crafts people um, to see if they'd like a table again this year. We've already gotten a couple of good responses. So if there's anybody out there um, who wants to have a table at the Rhinecliff Waterfront Day, they can certainly contact me um, or Alice Cunningham, who's the rec director. Um, so that's really about it. Great. We're in the very early planning stages, so there's still a lot of answers that we don't have. But we have Tommy from um, China Rose, who's working with James Chapman at the Rhinecliff Hotel on the food and the music part of it. Maybe we can get something out on our website. Yeah. If you want to write something, and we can massage it and put it out to call for volunteers sure. or vendors. Or um, Great. That'll be nice to have that back. Thanks. Yeah. Elaine, did you want to talk about this? Ah, OK. Is now the time you want to talk uh, Why not? <laughs> well, you to jump right in. Why not? You're right. Well, you know, um, since I've been on the board, there's been this question about Panda that's been raised several times to our board and to other boards as far as um, is Panda services, are they still essential to the communities they serve? We have an intermunicipal agreement with five um, municipalities, Town of Red Hook, Village of Red Hook, Town of Rhinebeck, Village of Rhinebeck, and the Village of Tivoli. Um, we recently learned that Red Hook is no longer going to be funding Panda. The village. The village, the village of Red Hook, not the town. Yes, thank you. So, of course, it, it brings up the issue of where the other towns and villages will stand now because 
it changes a lot when one municipality pulls out. Um, so I've had, I have very mixed feelings personally as liaison to this committee. I'm in full support of public access. I love the idea of what they do. Um, but you know, last year, we talked to them about the fact that there are some things that they need to do to get into the 21st century. And they came up with a great draft plan, and then it never really went anywhere. It sort of fell by the wayside. We never heard anything more about it. I personally was very excited by the, the plan they had, the draft. Um, I felt like they had a lot of great ideas of the kind of programming they could do that would really make them much more involved with the communities than it felt like they've really been. Um, you know, there, there is the argument that YouTube, we could certainly broadcast on YouTube for free. Are those services essential? I've argued for the fact that I think, and I do believe this, that there are a lot of seniors and other people who don't use the computer, either by choice or they don't know how to, so kind of becomes more important. But then the cable company changed the Panda station, and a lot of people lost it anyway, so that throws that confusion into the mix. So I think it is a good time to talk about um, Panda's in importance and relevance now. And what we want to do as a municipality, I mean, it, it seems silly, in my opinion, to go, and I understand where the Village of Redford was coming from. I mean, it seems to me they're in full support of public access, too. Um, but That's it, the letter we got from the mayor informing us. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. The letter from the mayor informing us that they were not. Would you like me to read it out loud? Yeah, why not? Sure. It's a nice letter. Yeah, it really was. Um, so they wrote it to Panda, and of course we were copied. And it says, Dear Panda board members, our village is currently looking at a new budget year, 2016-17, the incredibly low tax cap for villages, 0.12%, and the amazingly varied options and state of video technology options. On top of this, we have reviewed the current Panda five-year contract and see that it expires in April 2016. As you know, we pay $11,875 annually for Panda services and have been doing that for many years. Now we see other options for us to record and provide digital access to our meetings while greatly reducing our costs. The net result is that the Village Board has authorized a move away from Panda and this letter is to advise you that we will not be renewing our contract, the five-party agreement, as it expires this month. We did not make this decision lightly and know that it will impact the existence of Panda, but we also recognize that the video and digital technology has moved on and arbitrary tax caps force us to do more with less money. I have always marveled at the dedication of the station manager and to the board at Panda, and we wish you well, but we have to move in our own direction. Now, the only thing I will say is I wish we had a little bit more notice from the village. I mean, April 16, obviously, is this I month. I think we do, Elaine. I looked at the, uh, we, we can, I, I think we should ask them to come and talk to us at our next meeting. Yeah, yeah because yeah. this expires at the beginning of May, but it says that um, we can, any, you can leave at any time with X amount of notice. 90 okay. days of notice before October 1st. So we're funded through this year, and I think it's, you know, we're, we're, we're committed through this year. We can withdraw with 90 days of notice as long as it, we give the notice before October, and if another municipality leaves, we can give 30 days notice and leave. So it doesn't seem that we have, we have time, and I think we should discuss it. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. No, that is really good to know. It still would have been nice to have a full, like, Five municipal discussion with all parties present before somebody made a decision. It just would have been helpful because we're all in this contract together. Um, but, I, but I do think that um, I know some concerns that I've had with Panda. Um, one is that they're supposed to be there for the community and they're supposed to um, be able to train people and loan out their equipment and they're perfectly happy to do that. But the problem is they're very limited in their hours and availability to the community. So they're not, they're not available after working hours, and they're not available on weekends. And so how accessible are you to a community with a big working class if you're not available during non-working hours? And I think that's an important question to ask. And I know I've raised that issue to them before. So there, there are legitimate concerns. Again, I understand where the village of is coming let's from. Let's ask them to come to our next meeting, see if uh, the president and maybe our representative can come. And, you know, it will all shake out, but it's something that we need to discuss with the yeah. four remaining municipalities and the Panda Board. Yes. We fund Panda almost up $15,000 a year, $14,799, um, let's call it, 
It's 14,800. So, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Let me just say that uh, at least when I go out campaigning, uh, I am surprised by the number of people who say they watch Canada. Right. And um, I think, yeah. uh, uh, I guess you said it, that the number of uh, older people, and I guess I fit in that category. Uh, are not uh, tuned to YouTube or right. whatever. Uh, uh, so I think and it does uh, perform a uh, very useful service of getting the word out. And, uh, uh, you know, we can decide what to do. Uh, maybe like you know those other. Uh, People, uh, their uh, municipalities pull out, and uh, they can't go have to survive on less because uh, we're under the same budget. Right? Maybe they can survive on less. Maybe they can Hopefully. do some fundraising. I was just yeah. Maybe the model yes, can change. Exactly. You know, right. and that's the thing that I think they really need to look yeah. at is changing their model. Because I agree with you, people. There are people that do watch Panda and, and get it through the public access station that wouldn't otherwise see it, and that's important. They should be able to see. Um, town government proceedings. But again, they're, what they're supposed to be doing for, for the community is bigger than that, and that's what, and part of that is what's not happening. So I do think we need a discussion with them for sure. Good. All right, so that will be coming up. Um, any other liaison reports or anybody? Uh, the uh, uh, open space and affordable housing today is meeting this month with a number of possible uh, consultants. Assessors, I said at our last meeting, would be coming to speak to us with the state about our evaluation and a possible need for a townwide reassessment. Um, um, not until after Grievance Day, because this is their busiest time of the year, so it'll be sometime in June. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for resolution 2016-088, engagement of attorney to represent the town in the hearings before the Zoning Board of Appeals on the appeal of Red Wing Properties, Inc., from the decision of the zoning administrator denying non-conforming use application. Um, may I have a second? second? Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Um, resolution 2016-093, preliminary accounts payable, abstract uh, vouchers 448 through 506, 44 checks, totaling 69000 Six hundred and two dollars and thirty-eight cents. May I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, resolution twenty sixteen zero ninety four capital projects abstracts two checks totaling two thousand seventy nine dollars and ninety one cents. May I have a second? Second. Um, this is our our painted cart from the last for the natural burial. And um, um, all, any further discussion? Um, that that meeting? Uh, last meeting when you were gone. Oh, okay. Yep. Was, yep. Uh, yep. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Um, any opposed? So moved. I'd like to make a, a motion for resolution 2016-095 for our budget transfers and amendments. May I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, resolution uh, 2016-096, I'd like a motion for the appointment to the Recreation Committee. May I have one? Motion. motion. And I'll second it. Um, we are uh, appointing Leslie Hill 
uh, to the Recreation Committee for a term to um, through this year. It says a three-year term mm -hmm. ending December. Oh, yeah, 2018. Yes. Thank you. Three-year term ending De uh, December 2018. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Um, thank you, Leslie, for volunteering. Um, Resolution 2016-097, request for proposal for the execution of a portion of the Frost family trails at the Thompson Mazzarella Community Park. I'll make a motion. May I have a second? Second. Um, any discussion? I had a number of questions in the last hour. It's really difficult me. Uh, I was just reading the RFP, and it talks about a clearing. The trail, I gather, is going to be 6 feet wide. Right. And but you're clearing 18 feet. Why you clearing? Why do you have to clear 18 feet if the trail is only going to be six feet? There is a stone wall that runs around uh, the perimeter of the property, and the trail is very close to that boundary. And there is a lot of debris and trees that have fallen, and it's an area. That if while people are using that part of the trail, it would be wonderful to have the stone wall exposed and to clean up, to make it safer for trees that are down or falling or dead to just clean up that area so it's a more pleasant uh, experience. So you just clean on one side of the trail? Right. Not, not on both sides? Just on one side. The other side has the open fields that we have just leveled and uh, seeded. Yeah, it just, um, in the RFP, it, it's not clear that you're clearing just one side and not both sides, so at least I thought... It's just the one side. Oh, okay. I will be meeting with... Um, Maybe that could be just clearer in the RFP before it goes out, that it's clearing one side, the side with the uh, stone wall. Okay. And I guess the other thing is work to be completed in the spring of 2016. We're hoping that it will be completed before the uh, the season of the rec park, the rec park opens to the public for all their summer activity. I guess I would suggest you put in a specific date rather than the spring, you know, if, if you want, a day, day 31 or something. So, because I, I don't think, I think it's so indefinite you're going to have a problem. Okay. Um, what if we say by July 1st or June, <coughs> June 30th? You know, whatever day you want. I don't yeah. Know. June 15th. Yeah. All right. And then I guess the last thing I had is all soil and fill produced on the excavation trails will be transferred to a contiguous area of the great lawn. Again, not spe so specific, you know, they can dump it wherever they want on the great lawn, or can it be more specific? Are you going to mark an area on we'll, the great we'll lawn? We'll probably uh, have some flags set out so they know where to. Uh, I think it's something where we'll talk to the soccer people to determine where the best area will be because they're the ones that are going to be working in that area. But you're, I would think you'd want to have that designated by April 18th when there's the site Absolutely. visit. Yeah. Oh, okay, so um, that will be designated by, uh, or, or put off your site visit till it can be. Designated. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you, Sally. Uh, <coughs> I don't think it's appropriate at this time to talk about the um, reevaluation of the uh, drainage for the uh, soccer fields and baseball fields. Um, let's. Uh, can we get through our resolution? Can you wait till? Did you want to leave? Uh, I guess I'll wait and see. No, come on up then. You want to? 
Um, at the next town board meeting, uh, the town board agreed that um, the town supervisor, two members of the park committee, and two members of the um, group that are uh, volunteering to work on the soccer fields get together and discuss some of the issues related to uh, the work that they have planned, which you know would be uh, a promise to develop the soccer fields and uh, the need for, to look seriously at the drainage that was initially planned for that area. Uh, Aaron uh, Pepek, who has been the engineer over the past several years working on the park project, met with us and uh, there was a discussion that dealt with the seriousness <coughs> and how important the drainage issue was in relationship to that area and whether or not it would have an impact on the new roadway and parking area that would be necessary once the fields were developed. And uh, the result of that meeting was uh, to ask Aaron to come back with a proposal that would take a look at the engineering that was initially designed for a turf field versus a uh, grass field and what the implication would be. Uh, I talked to Aaron today and uh, he said it would not cost more than $4,000 uh, to evaluate that, take three people and himself then uh, working on the report, uh, I'm sorry, it take two people, three days to do the work and they would come back uh, to determine what the drainage needs would be. Um, there was a lot of discussion back and forth, a lot of technical issues, uh, whether or not drainage could be done after the fields were in place. Uh, did we have to live by what initially was designed when the type of field is going to be completely different, that the impact uh, would uh, certainly change based on what's being proposed. So, thank you. Uh, Aaron will come back with a written proposal. I don't know if the board could make a decision that up to $4,000 could be spent on that study, so that way they can do the work and we could move this project along. Right. Shelly, I have a question. Uh, have you determined how many fields are going to be needed for baseball yet? Because there was a question at the last meeting about whether they were needed or not. So many safe uh, so. I, I think what they have planned is that entire area will be uh, leveled appropriately and seated. And in the future, if there's a decision to make any changes, if, you know, at least we have something there that's usable and the work would be the same in the, terms of what the need is. The issue here is we were, this was spec'd out to do artificial turf fields. We are now moving to natural grass. So right. because of that, we need because to do another engineering study. Uh, an addendum to our original year engineering study. Do you want to wait until we get a written notice from um, Weston and Sampson, or do you want to approve up to $4,000 to do this study, which we have to do in order to move ahead? It's as you wish. Thank you. What my recollection was, and maybe something happened uh, while I was away, so it's not the last meeting. There's was a group that was kind of get together because uh, uh, Mr. Nicola representing, I think, this soccer. Was, this was the meeting. Okay, he indicated he had an engineer who He brought said, his engineer. Right. And we thought Wes and Samson was contrary, and they were all going to get together to see if they could iron out the differences. But I gather what you're saying is Weston Sampson is now saying that uh, they want $4,000 to decide whether or not the uh, uh, engineering report that Mr. Decola presented to us is uh, uh, something that they would uh, pass down to or not. No, they're going to determine whether or not the that they do earlier is appropriate at this time or uh, if 
the engineering or the drainage should be designed differently based on the uh, type of field that would be developed. They, so what? they did a study for an artificial turf field. We're engineered for an artificial okay, turf field. Okay, so that's what the difference is. And what now. Weston and Sampson said, before we can even dis talk to the soccer league and the lacrosse people about doing the fields before we do the parking lots, we have to determine what the inflow rate will be on a sod field. And the, the, so this study that they would be doing would tell us if the engineering they design will stand and whether or not we can proceed and let the soccer league go ahead without doing the roads first. And it would also include uh, whether or not uh, the speedies permit that DEC uh, approved is, a, is appropriate. Yeah. Is it going to satisfy the stormwater issues that DEC would be looking at? So do you, I'll go back to, do you want to approve up to $4,000 for additional engineering, or do you want to wait? I want to wait. My own view is we ought to wait until we have an actual proposal. Uh, the only thing it does is it pushes back the time of, I guess, we're trying to get it done before fall so they could get the sod in. It's going to take two years for the sod to take before anyone can play on it. But that that's fine. Yeah. Elaine? I assume they give us a proposal with oh, two Hold weeks. on. Well, Elaine, wait, we'll wait for a proposal? Or? Um, I don't know. I'm torn. I understand where you're coming from, wanting to get a proposal first, but I also understand that there's, you know, that we have a limited amount of time to the fall comes. So we have another two fast. weeks until our next meeting. We could wait. We could call a special meeting if we get one sooner. It's two weeks. And when, when, do, when do you, would you need to start all? Like, what does this have to be done to that? Why does it become critical? Well, I think, you know, everything, we've been postponing things, waiting for this group to get together and really make a decision what the next steps are. This is probably one step of a number of steps that will have to take place. I'm fine, I'm fine with waiting for a proposal. I mean, if we rush it, something could happen. You know, we're changing from, let's look at it, make sure, uh, you know, yeah, I'd love to say sense. let's do it, but it is $4,000. Is that all right, Sally? Okay. We'll do that. Wait. Is everybody, Joe wants to wait. I'm on the fence. You seem on yeah. the fence. Okay, my experience yeah. is. Let's err on the side of caution. Right? Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Sure. Um, resolution 2016-098. I'll make a motion uh, for appointments to the Board of Assessment Review. We started our, our uh, session in executive session, and we met with Teresa Velarde and Lisa Rosenthal. I'd like to motion that we appoint Teresa Velarde to a term to expire on September 30th of 2016 and Lisa Rosenthal to a term expiring September 30th of 2020. May I have a second? A second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016-099, Town Hall Use Application for the Giving Box Fundraiser. May I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Um, it's uh, Christmas in July, on the 16th of July, from 10 to 4 for um, the Giving Box. Um, is there, uh, it's, um, it's a charity to help pr uh, prepare for Christmas. Does anybody know what Giving Box is? They I think they help. There's a little uh, description on yeah. the Yeah, no, 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 I've I read that. Oh, Does anybody have anybody? No. Nope. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016-100, I'd like a motion and a second for a uh, purchase of a cemetery mower. Motion. Uh, motion. Second? Go ahead. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, let me just say uh, that uh, the reason uh, the cemetery uh, quote department is not recommending that we take the lowest bid because uh, we got five bids in the office that we're going with the lowest is that the lower ones don't have any grease stains on the equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I guess I would suggest that we amend the resolution to add a, whereas saying why we're rejecting the low bids so, uh, uh, 
anybody looking at our resolution in the future. Right, I'll, I'll second the amendment to the resolution to add a whereas saying that we're rejecting the lower bids because they did not include a grease fitting. Grease fitting, sorry. Okay, right. all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All in favor of purchasing the Toro Z Master 3000 for 67.19 and four cents? Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Thank you, Joe. Um, resolution 2016-0101. May I have a motion and a second for the Recreation Aqua Zumba program? Motion. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? Is Kathy Gardner uh, is an independent contractor? Is that what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming she's not. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016-102, Recreational Park Concession Stand Contract. May I have a motion and a second? Motion. I'll second it. Uh, we're um, a $200 rental fee for the summer season, which is up from last year. I think we had a successful season last year. and. We're sort of on our second trial year here. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Well, any? Uh, all right. Well, sorry. All right. Take it back. Uh, just, I think there are a couple of uh, changes that we have made in the contract. This is for the last year's contract. So uh, I think what you're going to have more and update this. Uh, update contract. the contract for this year. Uh, like in paragraph 20. Uh, the indemnity should include the terms of fees. Uh, John, will you, just, John will you just make notes on this? And, and or I can sure. point it out to Warren. So you'll update this and... Uh, well, I'll call to Warren and have him. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So <coughs> moved. I'd like a motion and a second for resolution 2016-103 for recreation department hires for 2016. Motion. Ma'am, thank you. Is there any um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016-104 authorizing our highway superintendent to advertise for the 2017 material bids. May I have a motion and a second? Ed, may I have a second? Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. May I have a motion and a second for resolution 2016-105 for the abandonment of West Miller Road? Motion and a second, please. Motion. May I have, thank you. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Hold, hold on. Joe, go ahead. Hold, all right. Well, let's hear from the public. Well, let me ask your question first. Go ahead. And, Bar and Barry's here. Well, a uh, couple questions. One, I don't understand what the process is. I wonder if the homeowner has consented, and I don't know who owns the land, okay. if there's an abandonment, or how this whole thing works. So I think we need some legal advice okay. before we uh, Great. Uh, uh, do this. But I'd really there. like to hear from the public. Thank you. Uh, uh, two people, would you like to, one, come up first and just introduce yourself? Uh, my name's Joe Wheelie. I live up on Buckwood Lane, and I was involved uh, 20 years ago when, when Town of Lambert tried to ban infections in the river. I understand that the bridge may need to be removed, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to abandon the road. You can close the road to motor vehicle traffic the way that it has been closed to motor vehicle traffic for the last 20 years and still maintain a valuable recreational asset there for people. All right, the fishing contest participants are in on that road for their three-week contest and other recreational fishermen are in on that road at other times of the year. From a hiking path, from a walking path, that asset is very valuable to us. It's also a very safe way to get bicycles across Route 308 for people who live up in our development. So, I would encourage the town board to split the issue into removing the bridge, which may be a hazard and you may have to remove the bridge from a the road. Thank you. Uh, there's another. Well, I'm 
Robert Walker, also a, a resident of Wetwood. Um, my concern is that uh, you should, historically, the town should not, without serious consideration, of paying them any right of way that they control. Uh, that particular section of highway has been part of the town highway system since before 1797. And just blatantly abandoning it is not, in my opinion, uh, an appropriate approach to take. Uh, I understand that it's not necessarily the most appropriate place for traffic on a regular basis with 308 uh, next door. But I agree with Joe that it has a lot of advantages for recreational and another possibility would be even for a detour around the existing 308 culvert if there was a need for reconstruction or repair or whatnot it could be used as a, a bypass right away isn't it not connected though it falls off at the creek right it stops no it crosses the creek all right, we'll hear from Barry. I don't know if there's an issue the, with the... The barrier is at one end and the old oh, the barrier, right. is at the other. Okay. Uh, it also uh, mentions in the uh, announcement that they received state and federal funds to assist in this. Do you know, have, know what that... We're going to hear from our highway superintendent. He's here to speak about this. Um, we're hearing about it for uh, the first time tonight. My feeling is that certainly the bridge needs to be repaired, worked on on it. Uh, I would suspect that replacing it or rebuilding it in, in the old stone structure may not be the appropriate way to do it, but perhaps a, a, a box, small box culvert would be uh, not terribly expensive and would serve the purpose of uh, replacing the existing bridge and allowing that section to be continued to use for uh, pedestrian, bicycle, uh, what have you, because particularly kids fishing. Uh, that particular section of stream, by the way, is one of the, the best fishing spots. I can't believe you said it in, in, on camera. Pardon? I can't believe you said it on camera. Okay. Yeah, you like said that? <laughs> Gave it away. Okay. All right. Well, no, the kids all know what it is. Thank and you. And the parents know. But, uh, uh, I don't think abandoning any highway section that is now part of this town is something we ought to do without real serious consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Barry, did you want to speak to us about this? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so, just to give everybody a little background on the, uh, the West Coast Bridge, it's the short section of road that loops around on the west side of 308. It's probably roughly a quarter mile long, and there's a bridge that crosses Landsman's Kill Stream. When Hurricane Irene came through in 2011, the bridge was washed out. The bridge was built in 1903. It's laid on a field stone abutment. It's a poured concrete bridge reinforced with old trolley rails underneath it. That's the steel reinforcement aspect. So the bridge is canted on the abutment now, and it's uh, unsafe for vehicle traffic, so we close the road. In the interim period between, or let me back up a little bit, we received FEMA funds and state emergency funds to deal with the bridge problem, albeit either removing the bridge and the abutment or repairing the bridge, whatever we deem necessary, to the tune of $6,500. Uh, the project was shelved, nothing was done with it, uh, nothing was considered uh, for the bridge itself. So we just got an email from the state asking us what was going on with the bridge and was, it, was the work completed, would we sign off on it? And I said, well, we can't sign off on the work because it was never done. So that's why this project is coming back to the front burner for consideration. I don't have a preference in terms of what we decide to do with the land, whether we retain the land as a township or we do the legal abandonment process and turn it back over to whoever it would be appropriate we turn it over to or sell it to. Uh, my concern is, from a highway superintendent perspective, is it in the interest 
is it in the public interest for us to repair this bridge and maintain this road as a township? I don't believe it is from a vehicular standpoint because uh, it would be a huge expense to rebuild this bridge for this little short section of road. I'm certainly not opposed to retaining the property as a township so that it's open for the kids to fish and whoever wants to walk through there. Uh, that wasn't my intent with the abandonment process. My intent is solely uh, to cover the public interest as a highway superintendent. And I don't believe it's in our interest to rebuild that bridge. I think uh, what we should do is remove the deck and, and restore the stream bank as the DEC specifies to us and then decide what we want to do further there in terms of the abandonment. Is this something that we should refer to Warren? Make sure to, so that he could give us our. Are we clear on our legal options? I think there, there's a difference between maybe abandoning a road, and certainly we want to retain the land for, right. for recreational use. Maybe we don't need to rebuild the culvert or bridge for vehicular traffic. Right. We can we can retain the land without maintaining the road. So that would certainly be an option in my point. Is right. this something that an attorney should weigh yes, in on? Yes. Sure. Right. Can we? Can we give it to Warren and we'll yeah. also get your opinion on what the cost would be to do what we need to do to repair the bridge for vehicular traffic and to repair the embankment for fishing? Most and definitely. We'll, does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. Uh, Let me ask. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yes? I, I think when you speak with the attorney, you'll find that you don't own the land itself, you own the right the, of way. The right of way. And those, those are valuable rights, of course. So we want to retain the right of way. right of way. Okay, whether or not it's for vehicular traffic or pedestrian traffic. And an abandonment requires that you hold a public meeting and declare abandonment. If we abandon the land. If, if, you, if you abandon the right of way, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so but we prefer to see the right of way kept or not be Okay, great. Joe, did you have a comment? I have a question. Um, for the fishing and for uh, access to the stream, does one need a bridge or something to cross it, or you just have to get to the stream so that construction would not be required? Without a bridge, you would have to walk from one end into one side or from the other end into the opposite side of the creek. Or, or but are you way just across walking across from 308 to the creek? The both ends of the road uh, access 308. And the stream is roughly in the middle of that length of, 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 of unusable road at this point. I'll, take a draw. I'll drive over there if you were there. Yeah, I'll take I you. Think. Uh, I, I, let me make a suggestion at this point. Uh, I'm not opposed to removing the existing bridge either. And if we are going to maintain it as a, as a right of way in the town, perhaps a simple uh, uh, walking bridge over that section of the creek so that the kids could get the people could get from one side to the other without vehicles bicycles and, and pedestrian bridge good well but again that's something that we would really need some more study when i was superintendent because once we build it we have to maintain it I don't think we have to decide that. We're going to refer it to our attorney and get well, our the attorney's legal. not going to decide. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Refer it to our attorney. We'll get guidance from him how we can retain it without vehicular traffic and what our options are. And we'll talk about it again. Well, I think we need to explore the options. Yeah. We're not. We're not. We don't know. We, I think it's a good point. No one wants to lose the right of way, and that's a sweet spot. So. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks for coming. Ian, yeah, we're going to table this and refer it to Warren. John, will you send it to him tomorrow? Um, okay, uh, resolution 2016-106, accepting Dutchess County DPW 2016-2017 road salt bid and award. May I have a motion and a second? Thank you, Ed. Second, thank you. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Barry, the question I have is the contract uh, provides for three dollars and fifty cents for storage after mm -hmm. seventeen. Do we have enough uh, uh, storage so that uh, we don't have to incur that cost? 
we will never incur a store of land on Highway 210. I promise you that. We Thank will you. find a place to park it. Thanks, Barry. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016 107 for the Dutchess County Shared Service Grant application for jet fat truck with the towns of Red Hook, Milan, Northeast, and Pine Plains and the village of Red Hook. May I have a motion and a second? Thank you. May I have a second? I guess the question that I have is, is this too many municipalities to share the jet fat? Can we use it all year round? Can we address that issue and we think it's doable because uh, we each think probably two to three weeks uh, per municipality, so that would be about 15 weeks total, and then some maybe unplanned stuff that we do down the road. So the jetpack truck is kind of a specialized piece of equipment, um, and I don't think five would be unreasonable. But we're six, it's the towns of Red Hook, Milan, Northeast, Pine Plains, and the village of Red Hook, we'd be the six. We would be the yeah. six, yeah. Um, Is it wet and dry, that? Yeah, it's got a uh, high-pressure hose on it, and it's used for clearing out culvert pipes, and also as a dry vac, and it also can vacuum wet slurry out of the catch basins vertically. So it's um, it's kind of a special use truck. We we rent them right now, usually for a week to two weeks at a time. What's the rental cost? I don't know. I don't know. I have to look. All right. Well, it's a grant from the county. Yeah. Any any. Questions? I guess my concern is um, that we haven't done this before in terms of we, we being the lead. And I want to make sure that this grant uh, has enough money to pay for the attorney's fees. Uh, and with a lot of towns, each lawyer for a town is going to have comments, so they're going to run our attorney ragged and uh, you know, build up the cost. So I don't know if this 400000 is just for the equipment or how much we're building in, but in the previous grants, they've thrown in 5000 for the attorney's fees for all the towns, and I think that would be totally inadequate. Well, aren't, you're the liaison to the yeah. department, right? What? You're the liaison to highway? Uh, yeah. So why don't you work with Barry to make sure that whatever we submit covers us? You know? Okay. Yeah. We're the lead. Uh, right? Yeah. Are we in favor of going after this bid? The bids are due in uh, month, uh, six weeks, I think. Yeah. 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 Great. Um, yeah. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> so moved. Thanks, Barry. Resolution 2016-108, Dutchess County Secondary Shared Service Grant application for a boom mower and a tractor with the town of Red Hook. May I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Great. S sort of same thing, Joe? No, entirely different because there we're not acting as the attorney. Okay. Uh, so it's a, as the lead town. Yeah, uh, this one is the routine thing that we and just a background on that, we didn't want to leave any money on the table if we don't get the a big back grant or a small grant. We wanted to have a small grant as a backup with this the possibility is a, of it because it's basically free money if we get the awards. And it's so. a useful piece of equipment for right. us. Great. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Okay, uh, resolution 2016-109, it's a local law repealing <coughs> chapter 125-61 of the town of Rhinebeck Code. I will make a motion. May I have a s second? Second. Yes, um, the clerk was just reminding me, and I have it written here, that we need to complete the EAF uh, together. It's in the front of your binder here, the short environmental assessment form. I'll go through it. And we can all agree if we say no or yes. Will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? I say no. Does everyone agree? Yes. Well, as our, our attorney we, has asked us to do this no, I, I, publicly. I, I understand. Let me ask the question before I answer it. Um, do we have a recommendation from our planner as to how this should be? filled out or, or from We have a recommendation attorney. that they're all no. That they're all no. Okay, yes. so that is the recommendation. Yes. 
but we need to fill this out. I understand. Yeah, right. Yes. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensity of the land use? No. Will the proposed action impair the character or the quality of the existing community? No. Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area, or a CEA? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or a walkway? No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy options? We say no because we believe that the state has, uh, has, uh, 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 has these guidelines in, in effect that are greater than what we were proposing. Will the proposed action impact existing A, public or private water supplies, or B, public water or private water waste mill uh, utilities, tr treatment utilities? No for each. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historical, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources? i.e. wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No. Does anybody disagree with this? Um, I have to do a roll call for the local law repealing chapter 125-61 of the Town of Lineback Code. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay, by roll call, Elaine Fernandez. Um, yes, I'm in favor of it. Aye. Yep. Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, hold on, Joe Gell. Aye. Ed Roberts. Aye. And Elizabeth Spinzia. Aye. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, approved. Resolution 2016-111, a local law changing the meeting date of the Town of Rhinebeck Board of Assessment Review. This is a local law. Is there any further um, discussion on this? We've discussed it a couple of times. Um, we are moving this to the Wednesday following the fourth Tuesday of May. Um, by roll call, Elaine Fernandez. Aye. Joe Gell. Aye. Ed Roberts aye. and Elizabeth Spinzia, aye. Thank you. So moved. Uh, resolution 2016-111, settlement of a tax tertiary petition. Uh, may I have a motion and a second? A motion. Thank you, Ed. Second? Second. Thank you. Is there any uh, discussion? This is a tertiary that was settled by our uh, Karen Hagstrom, our tertiary attorney from Formerly Garland. This is her recommendation uh, that we settle it. I assume this is also the recommendation of the tax Yes. She works with them, with the settle them. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Uh, resolution 2016, uh, 112. 2016 seasonal license agreement from the town of Rhinebeck for Farber Brothers Inc. to use the town's waterfront facilities in connection with a water taxi route between Rhinecliff and the Kingston waterfront. May I have a motion and a motion. second? Thank you. Uh, second, please. Second. Thank you, Ed. Is there any discussion on this? Uh, the only discussion I have is uh, I think it should make clear that we are using the kayak docks and not the uh, uh, dock that was formerly used, which is higher. Um, I, for Warren, but I think it can be done by a simple uh, amendment because I think the contract automatically carries over if you don't give notice by the uh, uh, um, I forget what it was, but I think it's already passed, so I think. Isn't that the doc he used last year? Pardon me? It's the same doc that he used last no, year. No, no, it's a different doc. Okay. I understand it from Al. Because that doc Oh, that was the one that needed the work the repair, that we did. Right. And I was told, though, that the, uh, the repair is not needed, that he was using a different boat, and you can use the lower uh, uh, dock in, in the water. 
but our other dock isn't going to be out, so this is the only dock we have to use, right? <coughs> right, right. So, uh, but the contract could be read to require us to uh, do the other dock, and the contract also says that uh, the uh, vendor has to make the repairs. The whole issue was to avoid the repairs. Okay. Uh, so do you want to amend the contract? Uh, or work with Warren to amend it? Or do you Warren. understand? I, don't, I, I sort of understand, but I do have a question. I mean, that larger dock, what about larger vessels? We, I think we didn't approve Bobby to fix it, and he had a short window to do it. I don't know if he can do it at some point during the summer, but it's not. Yeah, it's a we didn't well, I think Jeff Farber had his people over on um, the case, and they were going to do it. No, uh, apparently there was discussion with uh, Bobby that I wasn't, uh, or with, with him, uh, but it's about a, a, a it, it's a several thousand dollar project to complete that repair which would be necessary uh, to do it. I say we uh, approve this and look into more about what it'll take to fix yeah, the I'll other dock. All right, thanks. Right, and, right. and we'll approve this con uh, yes. contingent on you making the changes specific right. to the dock. Thank you. Well, I think as there's to there's bigger more. ships, uh, right. you know. I mean, that's important. Well, question is do we want to finance uh, Bigger ships. Well, we've uh, had that Well, they've got the years. Elaine, will, Elaine will bring it to us, yeah. and the board will decide if we want to if we want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, let's approve this, and you will work with Warren to make the change, so that it'll be contingent on that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, any new business before the board? Yeah. Actually, I have one thing that um, I. I meant to bring it up sooner, and uh, it, it may need to be taken until next time and maybe give us some food for thought, but the dog can mention. Yes. Um, as you know, the dog board and we were um, sharing the Red Hook dog board and services with our dog board and Miranda for those moments because our dog board works full time, and so they have a very good relationship, and she would come down and take care of the dogs um, when he was working. And in exchange, when their dogs in Red Hook needed to be kenneled, to be kenneled them because Red Hook didn't have a kennel. And so the issue we have now is that the dog warden in Red Hook has resigned as the Red Hook dog warden. But she contacted me and is willing to continue coverage um, <coughs> for a nominal fee to cover for Roger while he's working. Roger's extremely knowledgeable, so is she. They work very, very well together, and I think her services would be considerably cheaper than if we tried to contract out to do that. Um, so I am happy to work with her on some kind of a contract to bring it before the board for the next meeting. That would be great. Okay. The other thing is, um, I've been talking to the Red Hook supervisor, Robert McKee, and Sarah and Bowden is the liaison to dog enforcement there. Maybe reach out to her. I think they're going to go with the SPCA, and they had a really good contract. They have, I think, a $14,000-year contract, but it's for day only. They might need nighttime and weekend coverage. Hmm. So okay. let's see what you can yeah, shake out. Too. Thank you. Yeah, Anything no else, Elaine? No. Okay. okay, we have two resolutions that are new business. Uh, resolution uh, 2016-113, it's the resolution authorizing the attorney to the town to execute an extension of the tolling agreement between the town of Rhinebeck and the Red Hook properties. May I have a motion and a second? Thank you, a second. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Resolution 2016 114, accepting dona donation of trees from the Village Tree Commission for the town hall of Rhinebeck. May I have a motion and a second? Motion. Thank you. Uh, motion, Elaine. Second, Ed? Thank you. Is there any discussion? Again, my only hesitation on this is uh, that uh, the tree that goes on the uh, southwest side not be allowed to uh, uh, grow sufficient height that it creates a shadow on the solar panels. Uh, I am uh, hesitant put a tree there, Ed has promised he will remember 
to infinity that it has to be. But it's trend. replacing a tree that came down. Uh, I don't know how uh, uh, large that tree was. In fact, I don't even remember it uh, as to the size of uh, the picture. But, well, big tree, but uh, again, uh, we put a lot of money into that solar panels. So do we want the tree to go up, or do we want assurance from the arborist of the tree committee that our it will be intact. It will be able to get sun. It won't be that high. How do we want to proceed? Right. Barry has also, I guess, agreed for infinity to make sure that tree doesn't do. Infinity. So as long as he's somebody's going to remember. As long as he's breathing. That there is solar panels up there, and uh, okay. they can create a problem. Any further uh, discussion? That condition yeah. that, uh, Great. Both of them are signing we, up. We're, we're, we're all agreed here. Yeah. The pictures are beautiful. Thank you to the Village Tree Commission. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay. Uh, I think we're done with our regular. We have some discussion items. We have uh, a proposed. Um, Rookies Automotive would like to speak to us about a possible zoning change, and um, we have um, somebody here to make a presentation. Um, just as some background, um, um, this has been discussed um, with our land use attorney, our planning board chair, our zoning board um, uh, of appeals chair, myself, and uh, Sally Mazzarella also sat in on two previous meetings. It's as I think I forwarded to you our policy for zoning amendments. Anyone can come to us, we vet it, bring it before the board, see if we want to proceed. And uh, so we've had several informal meetings um, and now we're having a presentation to the town board. We're gonna need four or five minutes just to Yeah, take your time. Do you wanna, uh, do we wanna take a, a two minute uh, break or if you guys, can I make a motion for a, a, a three minute break? A second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. I'm going to take a five minute break to this set up. Okay, we're back. You want to sit there so you can sit? Yeah. yeah. We will go over. Yeah. I didn't know that. Absolutely. So, Elizabeth, first of all, we'll open up. Uh, Dan will then speak to the petition itself, and then Mark and, and uh, Ken will speak to what we're planning on doing. Is we'll do Thank you. Okay, I'll do my best to be Thank you. Thank you. It's quite a nice choreography. Hi. Hi, I'm Kristen Hudgens uh, from the Automotive. And we're here in front of you about a zoning proposal. Uh, we've come to the point with our business where uh, our buildings are tired, worn out, uh, too small and uh, in need of you know, a lot of upgrading. So being a Chrysler franchise dealer, we are also required to maintain a certain amount of um, standards. And so we're gonna show, we're, we would like to try to put our build, get our buildings close to their standards as possible and be able to facilitate the changes that we need to keep our business going forward. These are, you know, this, with a franchise, company, it's important to have to do your best to whatever you can to keep up with their requirements as if you're not um, up to your facility standards and certain things that they're not going to provide you with the vehicles, the incentives, things like that, kind of puts, kind of cuts your business right off. So really to keep our business moving forward, we feel that these are the, the necessities that we have to do now um, in uh, closing new buildings. The ones that we have currently are just not worth repairing and putting additions onto. So from there, I'll let Dan go on to for. Thank you. Good evening. Nice to be here. I've been before you a few times in the past. Uh, I'm sorry, Dan, you are. What is your relationship to this? Can you just introduce yourself? I'm and Dan Schuster. Planning consultants, uh, and the consultants of the Rugies on this project, and I consulted the uh, Mr. McGuire's zone oh, okay. a while back. Uh, 
I used to have a mustache. That's my probably like three. Uh... <laughs> I used to have a better memory too. <laughs> um, let me give you a little bit of background uh, on why we're here and what the concerns are and what the suggested uh, course of action that's being proposed is. Prior to 2009, map on the left in front of you, the Ruby property, which is in yellow, was included in the Highway Business District as a use permitted subject to special permit. In 2009, the new zoning law redelineated the business district to eliminate two of the three Ruby properties and in addition made auto sales and not a permitted use in that business district. Essentially... So the red line is what? This is prior to, prior to the red, red line. line. These are our three properties here, they're all three were in highway districts. Was the red line on the bottom? Or this is simply to get it easier to see where it's going. But yeah, somewhere so down it. here it ended, right? Yes. The, well, the highway business district. Highway business district. Do you guys understand where this is? Yeah. This, this is, is a way road. This is the cutover that goes, uh, hold on. Yeah, Here's the gas station. Yeah. That's a blank uh, where the drop clothing yeah, boxes, yeah. and that's another where the hot dog stand is, yeah. right there. The hot dog company. And these are the three properties on there, and these, this yeah. property here is the one on the other way. This is the property where the current, current facility resides. Uh, this is the property where the annex, where the power washing years ago resides. And this is the property which we own on and currently. The home, yeah, from Wayne Road. Yes. Yeah. And then this is the cemetery. Correct. Right. So the car wash is that his property? Yes, yeah, yeah. That was uh, uh, purchased by the group before 2000, before our uh, so we had an approved site plan before the use of that for the purposes. And that's where we released this and made this section of the property unusable in agreement to maintain it. Oh. oh, so you maintain that cemetery? Oh, we, no way. Uh, we, I don't think we maintain the cemetery, but we there's a piece of property to the south. Can you see one of these other big properties? There's a big lawn adjacent to the cemetery. Here's your cemetery here on this property. This whole section here is conservation easement area. And we gave that, that was one of the conditions of our buying the property. We gave that up. And we had a site plan approval to use from here back on the property. Again, that was part of 2009, and that was then highway business. But again, in doing so, this section was provided in And then, so this is the change in 2009. Now we have residential, residential, and corner business. So this is the only business district that Dan's referred to. And in this business district, car sales is forbidden. Your grandfather non-conforming use. Yeah, it's in, so the use is non-conforming in both the two districts, which is presently uh, is located. And the reason why we zoned it like that, according to the people who did the comp plan, was to stop the development creep crawl on the corridor on the gateway to the, the town. Uh, we would we would make the the argument that those two parcels that were eliminated really do not extend any strip commercial. They're really the, the rear properties, the frontage on. Okay, well, let's go ahead. What are you, you're at, and then you're and then at the, the, the proposal is, that, is to essentially recreate the pre 2009 uh, status, include the entire Ruby property in what's now the Crossroads Business District as opposed to what used to be the Highway Business District, and to make auto sales subject to various conditions permitted 
why you have a special permit. That's, that's what the petition that will be before you will include. The, uh, following the procedure that you, this board, adopted several years ago on the submission and preparation no, of I, I, I forwarded that to all of you again this week. You got it. Okay. Oh, okay. I have been printed. I can print it. We can print it out here, too. Let me, let me just add. I understand you want to make sure all the yellow is within a commercial Correct. Uh, thing. But are you suggesting you go outside of that? This is existing. That's the existing. That's the existing. So the, proposal, the, the proposal is to go so to this line around here, just to include those two properties. Oh, okay. Which were, okay. which were eliminated from the previous. Okay, so it's an arrow thing to just bring allow. Uh, bring property back again. How is it not spot zoning? It's not spot zoning. It's, it's, an, it's an existing, no one is an existing, it's part of an existing business district, which, as it happens, previously allowed those uses. Those properties are distinctly different uh, in terms of use than other properties in the area. Uh, and I, I, I will give you chapter reverse, but it does not meet the, the standards for spot zoning. It's, if anything, you could make the argument that excluding them is spot zoning. So you'll make the... That, that'll be part of the condition. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not that much different than what we did with uh, the uh, what used to be the flowers uh, there. We just dealt with the one parcel and uh, where McGuire we dealt with that. But I guess we we'll, we'll need some legal uh, there you know, backup or something. Yeah, well, certainly we'll be prepared to address that. Uh, and frankly, my, by and large, we're <coughs> reinventing the wheel. I mean, this is situation with order to order uses on that corner. Most properties existed for 30, 40 years. And we're, we're made non-conforming by the stroke of a pen in 2009. Uh, <coughs> what's being proposed is a, is a zoning amendment which would change the zoning boundary, which would reestablish automobile, auto sales uses under specific conditions relating to the issuance of a special permit. When you say special permit, that means whatever you want to do has to go before the planning board. It has to go before the planning board for both the special permit and site plan approval. Correct. Would you make this proposal, would you make the design of the building a part of this proposal? Are you yes. proposing to do that? Yeah, that's, that's where I'm going. We're proposing, we recognize there's no uh, mystery to the fact that this zoning change is being made for the purpose of allowing development of a new facility on that site. So we're treating it as one or two combined and related actions <clears throat> it will be dealt with under seeker as as a but the zoning as one half of the action the development of the site as the second part and review it with all of the secret documents that way both before this board and before the planning board will be the proposed site plan and architectural treatment of the building which would result from the zoning amendment to bond okay, so but does that come before us or before the planning board? The zoning change comes before you. Right. And you according to your procedures will refer the zoning change to the planning board. So the the, the building design will not come before us. Not let not me okay well, let me it, just it, it, First of all, it's something you're going to have to decide whether 
you or the planning board will be the lead agency. We will be. In that case, the, the lead agency for what? Under seeker. For deciding whether to make the zoning change. Well, under seeker, the first thing that has to happen is a determination of significance as to whether the zoning change <coughs> and the resulting site plan and building development as a result of it will have a significant effect on the environment or not. And you go through it, you went through a, a short seeker form before. In this case, you'll be going through a longer seeker form because the property is adjacent to a historic site, the cemetery that was mentioned before. So you, the lead agency will have to go through and evaluate both the implications and effects of the zone change and the resulting development of the site with the site plan and building as proposed. So if this board elects to be the lead agency, you'll be considering all of that. Your other option would be to allow the planning board as the other involved agency, which has an equal amount of interest, to serve as lead agency. Now, lead agency as to whether we change the zoning law? Lead agency for the purposes of the determination of significance of the seat. We've been the lead agency in the past, Taylor, and I believe we would continue. I would certainly advocate for us being lead agency. That's up. Obviously, that's, that, that's up to you. Yes, it's, it's your determination. Well, I think that puzzles me. Oh, hold on, Joe. Ed was a little before you. Do you have a site plan on the new development that we can look at? We're coming up. Yeah. We're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Right? Let's hold the, let's, do you want to ask your question now? Uh, I guess the thing that puzzles me is I just, by accident, happened to uh, uh, see uh, something about the Ford agency before the planning board. And um, I know the planning board was uh, uh, certainly um, sympathetic to the idea that if the uh, car company is telling the franchisees, you got to do it. Uh, you got to do it, but um, uh, at least the uh, planning board, uh, I guess, was concerned as to whether there was some flexibility so that maybe the proposal uh, could be tailored in a way to keep the rural character of um, the buildings yet satisfy the requirements of the car company. And, uh, Joe, that's the exact issue that came up in the previous two or three meetings that we had. Everybody recognizes that, you know, Rugi's, their Subaru dealership in the village is <coughs> marquee of you know, right. blending in with the village. Terrific, and yeah, I it's fully agree, and uh, hopefully they can come up with well, just, something that looks like that. Well, let me that, just, that, here that, in our zoning, what our zoning law says is that uh, the station or facility shall reflect the traditional architecture of the community and building and roof forms, window proportions, materials, colors, and details. All four sides of the building shall be designed with windows and other architectural features to avoid blank visible walls. That's in our zoning law, and our comp plan has two very clear objectives that development along highways in the town should be in keeping with Rhinebeck's scenic and historic character, and that new commercial development should be compatible with the setting, scale, and architecture of existing features. One of the concerns was that we not erect a cookie cutter, you know, three-story, you know, that, that it be, yes, that it be in keeping with our character. So I think within- There's been a number of meetings, and I think we've listened to what you folks have all had to say about that. And I think when we get to that section of this, you'll be, um, I would like to think that you'll be very surprised that what we're presenting. Great. Same. Let me just wrap it up by uh, <coughs> saying, I, as Scott said, there's been a lot, of, a lot of changes since the meetings that were had earlier. Uh, we think there's, Merit to the proposal and merit to the benefit to the town. 
moving along, uh, like Mark Kravinsky will go through and discuss the site plan as the person is proposed, and then <laughs> the final uh, discussion will be of the architectural treatments itself. Now, I appreciate you have lots of meetings, but for those of us who were not at those meetings, you're coming to us cold. Uh, and uh, so that, that's uh, where I'm coming from, so we want to be educated if we've got a vote on something. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, we've got lots of Yeah, but, yeah no. If, if no ask on our behalf of any votes. This is a preliminary. Yeah, our petition has not been filed. We so you're taking our, it's a, yeah, formal we request. Share with you yep. where we're at. And we think we've made huge steps um, based upon our previous meetings. And before we just put the petition in front of you, we wanted to throw this up. Thank you. And share it with you. So. But again, my, my one question is, are we the appropriate uh, people pass on a design or is that really any board's uh, function and uh, keep an open mind well, to it and I do they want to, I just, and let me just say it again, I would support this only if we did have the approval of the design, I'm concerned about that and I, you know, I know that, you know, the, the corporation is here to work with us, I would be loath to turn it over to the planning board, um, I would be loath to do a zoning change with, I, is it segmentation even if we do? No, we're, we're deliberately avoiding segmentation by including in the yes. action the zone change, the development plan, which includes the architecture. Yeah. That's my. We a lot to the planning board, including implementation of the whole. Uh, uh, there's only more. This but is I, the, I have an open yeah, mind. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think we have to argue. Well, about we're not. I'll just this make that. this I is it. This is also what set precedent for the other two corners. So, uh, will there be any hearings? <coughs> yeah. So it's, a, it's a local law, so there would be. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Mark Kavinsky. I'm a consulting engineer, Lance Rivera, here representing uh, Ruiz Automotive. So, <coughs> As has been previously mentioned, there's been several meetings uh, that have uh, members of the planning board and some members of the town board in order to uh, work towards development uh, for this for this uh, zoning change consideration, uh, you know, which has led to discussion of uh, what to do with uh, uh, you know changes to the to the existing site and also uh, the architecture. So <coughs> excuse me, I'm here to address what changes are being proposed uh, for the existing site. I'll, I'll do it quickly because on, on the other side here I have what's being proposed. So I'm just going to quickly cover existing con conditions because I think it's important uh, to do that because that's what you know was considered as part of what's going to be proposed. We try to, since, since we're, we are coming in front of both of these boards, town and planning board, um, to you know, have, take that opportunity to, to make changes to the site that certainly work better for the dealership and then also in consideration of certainly the town standards and what Ruby's want to see you know, for ultimate development of the site. So Dan and briefly touched on, we're dealing with three properties here. And so this is just a little bit of a larger plan of that. This is actually this piece right here on the 919 intersection, right here, that's where the existing dealership is. So that there's <clears throat> two, two buildings. This is where the showroom is, and this is where service takes place. And then, as you know, there's parking uh, right along the frontage of Route 9 and 9G. And so that's this piece here. Access, there's three access points, uh, one off of Route 9G here, one off of Route 9, and another one here off of Wayne Road. I'm just going to you know, walk through the parcel, just trying to give you a brief overview of, of the site. Then as you go through, there's also an additional piece that's being used uh, for, uh, for the automotive dealership. And uh, so this, and once again, this used to be part of the commercial zone. Uh, our rent rentals is right here. So that's this is kind of up a hill. Yeah, it goes up a hill, that's right, Joe. And so right in here, so, so here's a boundary line. So what's being used here is there's some cars, you know, that there's, there's a, uh, you, know, uh, you know, for display and for, um, uh, storage of vehicles, so there's a parking area over in here. So that's the second parcel 
for consideration. And then finally, you know, part of this entire process includes what was, you know, the what used to be the car wash. And I didn't actually was involved. I was the engineer that made application for Ruby's. It was you know, defined as Ruby's uh, annex, where that, that, that this is the old car wash building here, and so they use that for preparation, you know, vehicle preparation. So associated with it, access is off of a way road, and then there's parking area here. There were some plantings that were done as part of that site plan approval, and um, and also they you know, did mention you know during that application so that. Uh, you know, a conservation easement uh, was developed along uh, this section of, uh, of Route 9 uh, adjacent to uh, the cemetery. So that, <clears throat> uh, you know, that's just a, a quick overview of the existing conditions. If you could just... So just, you know, for if you, know, if you haven't, aren't familiar with, you know, or want to quick refresh, this is the site for that. So then here, so we'll flip this. And so what I did is, is so the shaded areas represent where the existing buildings are now. <coughs> right? So so uh, as part of this proposal, the idea was to um, you know provide a more efficient uh, a site plan, you know, for the entire operation. So now what's being proposed, once again, I'm gonna start. Well, I actually I should just just one other thing to consider. To, to, to mention. So I so when we started with existing conditions, there are three separate parcels of land. So part of this application, and Dan didn't get into it, but it's some of the detail that's related to the you know the zone change, or not the zone, the zoning text change consideration, is combination of all these properties. So that so you you know notice that there's no longer a division line here. Right? So it's now they're not all considered as one parcel. So Access still, so I'm going to start with access again. Try to run through it the same way. Access still remains the same. The, lo the, the points of location are still going to remain the same. Where, where we made some changes, and, and you know, based on great input from the committee that we met with and, and how uh, Ruby's wanted to develop the site, is that <clears throat> uh, what you don't see is, is the, you know, before, like some of that existing parking actually. Uh, encroaches over into the state right away, but, you know, because of the way that they constructed the curbing. So now the parking is now pulled further. It, it's, there's a reduction in parking along the frontage of Route 9 and 9G, and it's pulled further back away from the road. And associated with that is, you know, now as, as, as all part of the consideration of the development of the site plan, we're now all the components are cons considered when you when you start to think of what what you're going to go through for a new site plan approval. We're going to look at, um, you know, traffic flow through the site, parking, landscaping, lighting, other, all those visual things that are, you know, that are important as part of site plan approval. And that's what's been considered, you know, in, to get to this point, to develop these plans. So once again, um, you know, parking is proposed in, in these areas through here on, on the front of the building. So now I know it may be a little bit confusing, but now this here is, it's, instead of having two separate buildings on the site, there's just a single building. So this is now going to be uh, the showroom facility. All service is going to flip over to here. All service is going to be done in this area here. So some of the, you know, some of this space that was you know, initially used on this on this corner property is now going to be transferred over to, over to here, further further away from Route Nine. So uh, a new uh, new showroom building here, and then you know offices you know related to uh, to that business aspect of the, of the of the dealership. And then what's what's also done is, and I, as I said, with the with the parking along here, landscaping has been added. I have a final plan that I can you know quickly show some of the. Well, landscaping that's being proposed through there. And in, in doing that, in, in the reduction of some of the parking that was originally along, along 99G, we've now expanded uh, to the, uh, it, it would be to the, to the east and to, the, to this other property. Remember that lot line used to go through here. We now have parking through there. And so picked up additional parking for them. It's parking just for your inventory. Inventory, yes, it's, it's, it's for inventory. And so, 
the, the, you know, the goal of doing that was it's you know inventory parking, but if, as Joe, as you mentioned, it's you know there's a hill there, and it's all wooded area, and so the idea is that the, that woods is all going to remain around that parking area. So there's um, you know very little you know there's just simple access to this parking, landscaping uh, that's going to be associated with that. And as I as I mentioned, once again, it's all uh, you know redevelopment of this site, consideration of stormwater management. Now all the stormwater is being picked up and treated, and appropriate, you know, appropriately treated and discharged. So that's <clears throat> excuse me, that takes that takes place through not only the you know the showroom property, but also for the service area. That that's a, that's a consideration for for everything. So you know that is now you know in full, would be in full compliance with uh, the requirements of the town of Rhinebeck. And then shifting over to the. Uh, to the uh, service area. Once again, access on uh, still remains off the way road. Uh, the building, service building is now uh, in, in this area right through here. This parking uh, remains the same as it is now. This landscaping remains the same with some, uh, with some minor change uh, located to the north towards uh, right the key point. And then finally, <laughs> one more thing. The, this area here, Today, there's 14,000 square feet. We'll be reducing that by one third. So the building that will be visible and on this original lot will only be two thirds the size of the current footprint. So there's a, a, if you're cleaning up some yeah, of the so visual clutter, what, what is there an addition on the service? Yes, area? there is an addition. So your overall square footage goes up. Our overall square footage goes up by 3,000 square feet. Okay. Uh, but that corner is still clean over now. By 5,000 square feet. So it's up in the annex area? Yes, right. The growth is up here, and the reduction is down here. Where so it's, here's, I think it's the most visual. Yeah, there's 14,000 square feet today, mm -hmm. nine, nine is proposed. And up here, there's 3,000 square feet, 11 proposed. So we're moving much of that space up there. And plus the number so the 3,000 goes to 11, and the 14 goes to mm -hmm. 9. And those are round numbers. And then finally, this is just a this is just a visual. We'll try to provide a visual. You know, an, an initial. Oops, I'm doing. I need that. <laughs> uh, uh, just a visual of, uh, of you know the, the landscaping and uh, you know consideration. So the darker green, the darker green is going to be that's existing. And it's going to remain existing. So here is lawn, uh, trees in here, trees in here, uh, trees along through here. Same thing. All this, all these trees remain through here. The same thing in this corner, along. So a long way road and along 9G, and then this is all. This existing remains the same. The lighter green is where some, you know, uh, uh, landscaping improvements are proposed. So it's, you know, so you know, a list of. Uh, this is what's it? Kevin Gardner. Kevin Gardner prepared this. So it's just a list of, you know, uh, you know appropriate shrubs around. You know, parking areas in the dealership, and then uh, plantings. We're going to have some, you know, plantings that are associated with the stormwater management areas. So they're, you know, it's wetland type vegetation. So just to, this is just, you know, an overall visual. This is probably the only place that's actually an expansion of the group. Today we're parking. Cars are right up to the curb. Right yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So this, this all pushed back yeah. and then buffered upon the pushback. It just simplifies the corner. Okay. All right. Well, everybody's been waiting for it. So now we're going to go Yeah. There's a jungle all right. Well, my name is Ken Cyrus from the Cyrus Community Resort. So, a little bit about us. We, we do a lot of private ventures. We have over 10 in design in our office right now. Um, we're made on the body and, of course, rubies. So, what we have done originally is if anybody's ever seen a pricing dealership, it's always a sleek metal a lot of storefront, a lot of glass. And from our um, meetings, it was pretty obvious that that was not going to fly with the town of Rhinebeck. So the rookies charged us with coming up with something with, that could be more uh, amenable to them. So what we looked at is we looked at the design code, and the design code really calls for a lot of natural materials. So we're going to use stone, fiber strip siding. Uh, but we need to try to- I'm sorry, what did you say after stone? 
five percent signing. It's a it's a fifty year signing material. So it's made of it's a it's like cardboard, yeah. but it's, but it's, it's a, a, to like a hundred board or. Well, wonder board is not as good as fiberglass. I said fiberglass. Yeah, fiberglass is brand new. Yep. So, um, what we had to do, well, what the movie really charged us to do is come up with a design that can hopefully meet the town of Rhinebeck's expectations for their design code, but also try to get, uh, you know, something that we feel could be approved by Chrysler. So we really wanted to keep the marquee arch, which is what you see here, which is their signature element. Um, we have it clad with stone, a field stone. We have the two lanes with um, the four marquees, windows, peak roofs, and the same thing siding, some nice brackets. Um, that's the view right there. Same length as our super store. I love the super store. So we have a couple of different views. Um, Another view, different. So these are just views from the road. Different, different angles. Yeah, that's facing the gas station. Uh, this would be the gas station would be here. You can park in between the building and the gas station. I'm on the northwest looking. You're on the west. Route nine going south and northeast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Route nine going south. And this would be route nine heading north. That's the main sales building with that. So we have a lot of non-traditional parcel elements here. The sloping roofs, the uh, gables, windows, no storefront, no metal panels whatsoever. So, um... What, what, and that's the extent of the signage, too? Yes. Yes. There's a pylon sign. There's a pylon sign here today. Compared to this sign. Yeah. But this is the, the extent of the building signage. Oh, okay. oh, it's the pylon sign. Yeah. 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 Can I see the existing the corner? <laughs> yeah, thank you for my This the, just so you know that signage is not in compliance with what I mean what you have on this front of the building right now would require variances. It's all, it's all part of the position. But it would require variances. It, uh, under the under the current uh, code with regard to signage, yes it would. And this is all presupposing that anything going forward with the landscaping would also be part of site plan. So looking at that right now, anyone accepting that would not be accepting that landscaping. Well, that, no, 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 that's not. So this rendering doesn't is the building. We're okay. not trying to represent the landscaping in the rendering. Okay. Right, that's, yep. Just for all this that. is the building. Yeah. No, the landscaping is not represented, but if we put all the landscaping, you miss some of the features of the building, which is what we yeah. help with. That's why there's only one time. So. Yeah. My recollection of the Ford thing was that the, one of the objections, or, or let me rephrase it, that one of the requests of the planning board was to see if they could remove that front sign, that big sign that said Ford, I, I don't know if Ford would agree that that could be done. Well, that, would, that was going by a sign variance, right? Yeah, so, it, um, so I, I happen to work on the Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, one thing, though, Joe, yeah. just to go back. We did work, as Mark knows, for a couple of years, at least, with yeah. Ford. And one of the things that's very different is that Ford uh, dealership was keeping the existing building. Right. As opposed to this, which is a, a new build, if you will. Yeah. But then the sign went in a different way. Right, and so, and so, and so, you know, with regard to for the time frame, there was actually some change of ownership through there, too, so it did get extended. But it, but it was also with a, you know, several meetings with the planning board and cooperation with the planning board that we were finally able to develop the site plan and to actually gain site plan approval. But we actually just went to zoning board of appeals for our request for three items. And those three items that we requested was, a, 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 and they were area variance requests. So an area variance for uh, front yard setback on parking, just because of the existing condition. But, but we would be dealing with all of that within this yeah, I was just in amendment. This, I would, well, it, with the exception of one thing. And so I'll, get, I'll, well, I'll just get right to that, the signage. And so 
Um, when you actually, when you go through the code for, for running that form, it's, it's based on signage, uh, calculation of signage is based on the number of lineal feet that you have, a frontage that you have on a highway, or a maximum of 30 square feet for the entire signage for the site. And so, in this case, we certainly, you know, and so uh, a plan was submitted and, and, and considered by the planning board. And so the, the signage that was proposed included keeping those existing uh, signs out on 9G that Ford had, in addition to including, you know, a lettering that's attached to the building. That application was made to the ZBA for an area variance for, for the, school, the allowable area of the signage. And I should, I mean, it, it's still under consideration, but uh, it seems like the ZBA is favorable towards so that change. All right, but with regard to this project, what you're saying, signage would not be a part of of CEQA or, or any. It, Dan, can you help me out with that one? I mean, why wouldn't it be part of what we consider based on visual impact? Uh, the basic ground rules will be proposed in terms of the area of the signs, given the nature of the use. Uh, that will be part of the zoning amendment that will be before you. And part of the seeker determination, the visual impact, will be how using those standards affects the visual quality of the, of the building and the area around it. Okay, so the broad strokes would be up for us and the finer strokes wouldn't for signage. Well, Within the zoning amendment, we would, we wouldn't need it. Well, within the zoning amendment, you will have some some basic standards in terms of size, location, etc. I'm assuming but you wouldn't need variance, zoning variances, because we'd be dealing be with goal, it all. Right? That would be the goal to, to establish the zoning so that its variances aren't required. So assuming we. Uh, Agency, we would determine the size of the signs. You would determine the environmental significance of the proposed standards and how they and how those standards are are replicated or are utilized on the buildings that you'll be looking at as part of the you know, architectural design. But the short answer is that. We, if we decide with the lead agency, we determine the size of the signs uh, in yes. conformity with this. That that's what you're asking us to do. Correct. We're also remembering as you're going through that process and making decisions that you have two other undeveloped corners. Just remembering that as you're this sets precedent that as you're examining your choices here, there's potential on two other I understand, but we're not being asked to change the zoning. But in, in a, a, let me just finish this, but in, in those other corners. You, those those you other are, corners are yeah. still zoned uh, not part of highway. So it's what? It's, it's the same zone. They're already in the. They're already in the district. Highway business district. They are, and subject to, among others, uh, restrictions that automotive uses are not currently allowed. So the other corner of the automotive is not allowed. But it is not allowed where we are today either. So we're all in the square district. What we're proposing is a change based on a special use permit. Based on that special use permit, certain criteria will have to be met for that permit to be applicable. Those are the pieces of the pie that we are going to propose that are going to make it very restrictive for just anybody to apply the special use permit. So it's not going to be, there's going to be conditions that you have to, you know, whether it's a certain number of acres available to you to, make, to apply that special permit or linear distance from another certain type of business, there'll be constraints so that if you want an acre of properties in a CB district, you can't suddenly start selling cars. It's not going to be that simple. A special use permit will define those things, and that's what will be in the zoning that we prepare, petition that we prepare. So you, are, you, are you asking us for anything tonight, or are you just no. presenting? No, we're presenting. 
just wanted to bring you up. I, but I, I guess I'm still somewhat confused uh, with what we decide with respect to uh, uh, the, 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 what's called the Ruby parcels. Mm -hmm. Does that necessarily mean we have to decide something as to the other corners? No. What? Maybe eventually. Yeah, so yeah, but somebody else could position us based on this setting of precedent. I'm saying you have to examine that question. Yeah, right. Right. Could we attempt to address that or give you a way to address that can in I our petition? Can I see the business district? The three schematics again. And the red is the business district. No, the red is just yes. The red is the corner. CR is the corner business district. It's the inside of the red height. So all of this is uh, current. These are the other corners. The existing CR of these is. In other words, our, we do believe that our petition will make it readily available for somebody else to do the same thing. But if somebody else wants to do something in that highway uh, district, the other corners, they would have to go in front of the planning board. They would do the same thing. So what? They would be forced to come, if they wanted to sell cars, which is what we're proposing, they would have to come forward you as well, unless they were able to fall within the special permit of okay. constraints in which we're going to propose. Because we're changing. Oh, because you're asking us to say that in any uh, uh, commercial business district, not in any. Only in this particular, this is the only place in the town that this CRV district exists. I see. And what's being proposed is... So if we add a use to it, right? In fact, are you asking us to add a use yes. to it, which says you can sell cars, you're saying... Subject to certain ground rules. Subject to certain ground rules, the other corner, the other two corners, which don't have anything on them, yeah. Could be car dealerships. Could, could be. No, but there you have. Depends on how the ground rules are. Other conditions in there. I, I asked that already. Yeah, I guess I'm still confused as to why you say I'm the owner of one of those other corners. I don't have an argument for you having spot zoned this corner. We, there's, there's two approaches, right? I mean, we're still talking about. We know the objective is not to have car dealers all, all over the, the corner. One we've discussed about is having a minimum acreage as part of the requirement for a special permit, which would be seven acres, exclude, and which would not include wetlands or, or protected streams or so forth. <coughs> The Ruby parcel at the moment is the only one which satisfies that stage. Another approach, frankly, we're talking about, and it's one which is used elsewhere in the zoning law, is to establish a distance requirement between automotive uses. You presently have a standard in the zoning law which does not allow one gas station within a mile of another gas station. I believe there's a similar requirement for fast food establishments. Mm -hmm. The same procedure could be used in automotive sales uses have to be a certain distance apart. The only problem is that we already have one nearby, so we might not appear as well, giving a monopoly to one company. Well, no, it could be a quarter of a mile. It depends on what the distance establishes. But these are the only two uh, what you're saying this CR-B district, that's the only one in town. Uh, so if you said uh, uh, another 
It's right. cross, you know, that's Crossroads see. Business, yeah. right? There's what? Crossroads yeah. Business. Oh, it's Crossroads. But it has to be a mile away. But in fact, they couldn't do it because there is no other district. Well, you know, well there are other business districts. Well, Actually, none of the other, the only other districts. Did you have an in another district? The only other district that the permitted in is this uh, BP district, where the four places. The other commercial districts in town do not allow for a lot of sales. So four is here. Yes. And this is the only, only business zoning that has, you can sell cars with special programs. What, what about, don't we have a square footage of 8,000 8, square feet? So you're saying one building is, tell me the square footage again? 191. Okay, so how would we get around our square footage requirement? Well, we propose to, well, this, the special permit conditions, uh, in some cases, will exceed or be different than standards used elsewhere in the zone. In order to avoid many variances. And once again, it's only particularly in the crossroad business. Just one of the seven, you were throwing out the concept of seven acres as minimum. Yeah. And that would theoretically. Seven acres is total acres, but it also disallows the use of wetland okay. and, and other non buildable. But so the other corners, the other two corners, are not seven acres? And they're not, and if you combine them and eliminate the wetlands and whatnot. Yeah. So but they're not seven acres as they exist today. Correct. But there would be nothing preventing, say, I think Sarukas owns the southwest corner. Mm -hmm. Were he to acquire other parcels along the line, or he or any other single person buying other parcels could achieve seven acres. But they would also achieve them outside the business district and then would be back in front of you today arguing that you need to further extend the business district in different directions. So there's no potential way of achieving seven acres within what you're proposing? Not if you, and not all by, with the elimination of wetlands and other waterways. Other constraints. Yeah, and perhaps another approach is we would just combine both of them. The, uh, approaches of the acreage and the distance requirement. And you could say that if within a mile in this zone, you know, if you go a mile, there's no other, this is the zone. In, a mile, in 300 feet, you're out of the zone. So I mean, that same language would work. Has Warren? No, we need, this is the first public, we have to get an attorney involved. Yeah. We yeah, have this to. Is just no, this is the first. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, this is the third or fourth time I've heard it, so I'm a little. Yeah. Bit. This is brand Do you new. have yeah. handouts for us, or can you get us color yeah. copies of uh, these presentations? Uh, Elaine uh, John uh, Lyons uh, has been involved in some of the preliminary <coughs> conversations. So okay. your land use attorney has had okay. some. And Melody and Sharon and um, and um, Scott Bergen. Um, I'll, I'll email you color photos. Would you? Yeah. This, this summarizes much of what we're talking about. It lacks the color photos, so I'll just remind you tomorrow. It's a working draft, emphasis on the working, so it's still a working draft. I'll take one for Alan and the clerk if you don't mind. All right. Do you have more to tell us? Or? Let me just say for the members of the, of the town board, um, the concern of those who, those of us who were involved initially was that the vision, there are a lot of very positive things that have been brought forward regarding improvement to the site plan on the property. The right. visual look the of visual the visual of the property. And we feel that what is being talked about has 
the potential to really improve the corn. It is, by all measures, by all standards, the gateway to the community. Certainly, it, it almost in at least two directions coming into Rhinebeck, possibly others. Our concern was not with the site plan, but with the architecture of the building. Yes. Because the things that were in place when we were talking about the 8,000 square feet, we have in place standards that don't allow drive throughs There were very deliberately things put in a comprehensive plan that would deter big box franchises from taking root in Randeck and taking over what we consider, consider to be our identity. So I will say that the first, first architectural designs we saw were not pleasing, but did promote big box and franchise. What they brought for us tonight is a vast improvement over what we've looked at before, and I think opens the door to conversation. Um, but th those of us who met before were not in favor of a rezoning unless we were to achieve an architectural design for Rome that, that we felt fit our comprehensive plan in our zoning. So the conversation is important, the dialogue is important, and I appreciate all the work that you guys have put into yeah, moving this, moving this in a direction that I think is, you know, we heard we hear a lot about Chrysler branding, but I think the comprehensive plan is from that branding. So, we're the we're, we're the um, stewards of that. Looking, you know, we're really not looking to take away. You know, we need to keep our business going. Yeah. And we do have to we do have to provide a certain standard yeah. to our, our brands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, you know, I, I hate to hear the big box in reference to just because we have a franchise and your mobile stations are a franchise, your CBS is a franchise. So it's not, you know, it's not a franchise that we have. We, we do need to keep going and we're trying to, you know, I mean, we're doing whatever we can trying to make everything work. Um, I keep going back to, to Subaru, you know. I'm a, yeah, and I think we have some changes we have to make I'm there. sure. We're actually going to make changes in that because we have to, we're not. Uh, and I, I, we understand that, we, we understand change, that, so. you know, the corporate, corporate is putting pressure. They won't deliver you cars. They won't pay you what you, we understand. And it's a minimum. That's what we're, you know, they have the minimum standards. So that's what we're trying to get to the minimum. We're not, we're not looking to be fed home motors and putting up, you know. We always yeah. thought that we could partner with you in working with your corporate, um, you know, corporate to work, to deliver something that's acceptable to our town. You know, we thought that we could, and you know, you're, 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 you're a lot further that there than you were and, and the we're last still time we did. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, no conversation has taken place either at the minimum of the planning board or the town board or others where we don't say this is a business that this community values and wants to stay here. And whatever we can do, either at the planning board level, through the zoning department, through anything, to work with Chrysler, should they wish us to, should you wish us to be involved, we're willing to do that. But I do want to go back to I saw um, vast improvement in what we proposed tonight, and so I, I think really, um, at least from where we'd be looking at it from site plan, from special use permit, in terms of what we would approve. I want to see more landscaping personally, but well, let's you know we this is a long process. It'll come before the town board. Yeah, we do, we do have issues about you know all the things we raised. I think about the special use permit and what would happen to the other corners. And I think we need to make a decision of, you know, get our attorney involved or, or wait until right. we hear from you. But again, but a lot of times some questions stuff we have good discussion with everybody here. But Melody, when you say we, <clears throat> is that the planning board or that, that's you? The, no, no, it's not. Are, are other the plan, yes. people on the planning board involved in the this? The process that we've been going through in, in complex situations like this is John uh, convenes um, interested parties, as well as Sharon and myself in Art Road, and we begin to talk with oh, the so Art's been involved. Art's been involved well from the beginning, and we talk about um, the sort of um, the concept, um, what would what would be involved, what would be doable. You know, those conversations are not about what we like or what we don't like necessarily, but what can be achieved, how can it happen, 
and, and frequently we go through a couple of those meetings. Mark, Mark is there, Dan's been there, um, you know, Scott's been present. We brought Sally Mazzarella in early on because Dan, in the very beginning, asked the questions of why were these changes made in the comprehensive plan and the zoning? Was it a mistake? Well, no, Sally was able to say no, it was a deliberate decision on the part of the comprehensive plan and the zoning people to do this. So that's the sort of give and take. I'm not speaking for the planning board here um, by any means. The planning board has not seen any of this, um, and I expect they would have their own opi individual opinions, and um, we would come to a decision as a group. Just as I didn't speak for the town board when I met, this is the first right, time uh, okay. we're here. Okay. Now, what role does Chrysler Corporation play in this? Once you come up with a design that... Then that we, take, we take our design once it's approved and we have design documents and then we submit to them for their approval. At which point we also do some, a lot of lobbying. Right. If, if we had a, Are they involved in the process? I they won't get involved that. until we have design documents. I see. This so way, when you said design approval, this, this, you wouldn't get local approval until you had signed off from Chrysler. No. Chrysler will not, this design does not meet their corporate standard. They have a document that says, here's what we're expecting. I know. Our designs do not meet that. Therefore, they're not interested in having a conversation with us until we have approval to go forward and have building documents, at which point we'll submit them, at which point they will, as part of the franchise agreement, take them under consideration and review based upon the constraints that we're under. So you could go through a revision and a I could proposal spend a to the planning board, board. And, to, and you could go before the planning board and you could get go all the way through the process and get planning board approval before you would go to Chrysler. We have no choice. That's the process. The Chrysler, they, this is not their standard design. This is not oh, what they're asking us for. The millennial standards are online. I can go look up what the yes, yes. you do. I I so if we were doing that, we would come to you. We already have building design. We'd have building documents, and they'd be happy to sit and approve or to review them, assuming they would approve. This, it's, you know, it's, it's the cart and the horse. Who's going to be ahead? Their point is very clear. If you're under the constraints of your town, and we understand that you're not the first dealership to be in the town of this sort, the plan is you get your approval, you come to us with the best design you can, maintaining as many of the features, and if we can approve it, we will approve it. Now, now you're using the planning board, but I guess what you're suggesting is that the planning board doesn't have a role in this other than maybe recommendations. No, 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 I'm not suggesting the planning board has, well, I'm not suggesting that at all. The planning board has all of the steps in which Melanie's organization has to go through to approve it. The concept is, I think, and Dan, you guys jumped in here, we're doing two things at once. We're asking for a zoning change. And based upon that zoning change, we're asking for design acceptance. We, we, we're would, doing that. we would be accepting the design as part of the zoning change. Right. So and the planning, then you would, you would refer it. Perfect. We would we refer understand. it to the planning board, Sorry. the conservation board. advisory board. We would hope that we're, there would be no zoning, um, you know, no, no. Right. And then they would come back, under <laughs> ideal circumstances, they'd come back with the approval, then you would approve the zoning, at which point we would then have, could go to building documents and submit to Chrysler for what so, we okay. hope would be approval. And again, we would, our case to them would be to go back to your comprehensive plan and say that we've done the best we can to design a facility to meet your requirements and to meet the town's requirements. And this is the best we could. I mean, I'm still confused, though. It's, uh, it's that <laughs> are you asking? We can ask the planning board for advice. You might. Even we have to, to refer. We have okay, to refer right, right. it to we the have planning to board. Ask them. You, you but the referral to is for advice. You're not the planning board under your proposal. The planning board is not. Uh, the final arbiter, we, are, we would be but, yes, but you could, I would presume, delegate that authority on site plan and special use permit to the planning board. Even without that, under the present uh, process, you are the ultimate authority on approving the zoning change. Right. 
you ask the planning board for their recommendation, should you approve it or should you not. If you approve it, then the applicant has to submit to the planning board a site plan and architectural treatment. And at that point, the planning board is the ultimate Unless we decide to do it differently. So that's for us to decide. Does anybody have any more questions tonight? Just, just oh, one. I just said it's more a statement. It's not a question. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly all for seeing businesses be able to thrive and grow. And I, I get that where you're at in terms of your need to um, expand to keep your business alive. What I would have liked to have seen that I didn't see in those images, I would have liked to have seen um, a different perspective of what the building size looked like in relation to the gas station across the street. It would have given me a greater sense of perspective because when I'm looking at that building, it looks huge. It's not that it's not beautiful, but it looks enormous to me. And I think it would have given me more of a perspective of the size to see it from the view of looking at it across from the gas station. So I mean, the current building that you have that out of the service facility is how many square feet of? It's, it's 13,000. And the proposed building is nine. So the proposed single building on that lot is going to be smaller than the current large building on the lot. So currently there's two buildings. And it doesn't look that way in the image. Yeah. Well, so and, be, and I understand it's, it's like... It's actually larger than our proposed building. Right. But it's but your proposed building is now higher. Yeah, yeah maybe that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not to this peak, it's not... No. It looks like, okay. doesn't it? So, so this, so that we're on a hill, this whole thing is on a hill. So if you walk out the, the back of that building, the roof is almost on the ground. Oh, right, of course, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. On top so that, of it, right? It's just a perspective. It's so hard to Well, we could, as part of our review, we could ask Those for perspective so drawings on top of what exists. We can do all yeah, the visual that, impact that studies. Well, so the purpose of putting a small building on now is we're opening up the space. Now we can put, we can do, like, apparently we don't, we, don't, we can't do yeah. the landscape. We can stuff everything into this. Yeah, those cards. So if we have one building, I just want to I want to wrap this up tonight and move on to our last piece of business uh, Elaine any more I mean this is something I think I suggest we chew on this I suggest you know you can talk to Melody you can talk to us you can talk to anyone you want and we can decide they're not asking us for anything tonight I think this was a good proposal and uh, I, maybe you are asking us for something. Just one thing that we have the ability to, to, to make a formal application to yeah. the board for consideration of this board's Did activity. you want to make it tonight, or you're making No, it? no, we will. We'll, yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll submit you know, appropriate materials, appropriate you have our. Materials. You have our, we have a policy that's, that, it, that we've given you, and you follow the policy. Correct. And so, you know, this is just a preliminary meeting, yeah. But we would like, you know, uh, your consideration of this board for the first So you're asking us whether or not we're open to receiving a proposal, which is how we, I, I, uh, you wanna, Joe, are you open to receiving a proposal? Obviously, we, we are, that's what we were. Yeah, I oh, think, never say no. No, we can. Anybody can make it. Uh, I think that we, I think though that we laid this out when we did it first to make sure that the applicants know that we are in favor of looking at this with the idea of working with them to come up with something so that they're not wasting money and yes. time. Right. We're not knee-jerk saying yes and having you know no intention right. of working with it's it's to save you know energy and money. And I, I think the feeling is yes, we right. want to work with you, we want to to make you know Thank you. Yeah. I can right. myself and say yes. Yes, yeah. I do. The existing facilities are really important. Yeah. We value the company, we want you to stay here. We want to clean up the corner. What you've done, yeah. What you've done with the architecture has come a long way. So, was a fruit stand? Oh wow, you guys started out as a fruit stand. Yeah, it's got a little bit of fruit. fruit. Wow, and that was the mobile station too. All right, Ruby's fruit stand. It was just a fruit stand. All right, well, thank you. If you have anything else for us, you're good with us for tonight. Thanks. And Mark, or who's getting me the color? Okay, thank you, Scott. I can drop all the copies. Yeah, that'd be great. Mark, you want the you want the plan, the large scale site plan? 
No, we just, I think we just want, so we can have it. No, I would prefer working copies and a PDF that we could send to one of them. Please call it when they send you a That, you want a full size like that, or you want to have like a I guess we should have a full then. Yeah, you know, what we can have to work on and then look at, you know, if you want to leave those with us, we'll keep them. We have questions. Which obviously we have lots of questions. Who do we address them? So should we talk to you? Okay. It should be on, I'll send the email out to Elizabeth, whatever you want. Chris will be on top. You should record that. You'll have a question. I'm not sure. What is your name? Scott. I think they're oh, yeah. married. Oh, okay. Okay. You seem to be related to the... Only by marriage, Joe. Yeah. And they're part of my hero. I figured. How do you feel about the goats? You don't have to answer. Oh, yeah. don't have to answer. Yeah, sorry. We're going to move on to our next piece of business. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks for coming. We'll see you soon. We're, we have one more piece of business. Um, thank you. We'll look forward to the presentation. Um, I'm sorry, Barry. Somehow you got to the last highway department credit card. That's okay. We can table it. Sure. Is there, um, <laughs> Barry, you're the best. Um, is there any public comment on non-agenda items? Well, I think this gentleman said he wanted to I, I, I'm getting there, Joe. I'm looking right at him, <laughs> well, maybe, thank you. If it's related, maybe oh, hold, 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 I can take it. I think I got it. I mean, going back to the, what are the four corners of that intersection, there's the best part of that intersection. There's, there's very, a lot of traffic going into the gas station that causes a problem with, with the new setup on, on that intersection. And the, the area directly across that area, one, one is wetlands, which is, they've been trying to sell that for the past 10 years. And that butts up to the, the trailer park that's, that's right beside it. And the area that's, that is owned by the Double D people is being used by a parking lot for both Jetco and the Crane people. And it's, it looks ugly well, that's, compared to what they this is That's not within our purview. So we're here to talk about what we can do. We can't, we can't control what isn't going on in the other corners right now. But I agree. This is a nice, a nice proposal. Is there, and did you have comment, any comment on non-business, any public comment on non-agenda items, anyone? Does anybody else have anything else to address the board about? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you.